Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is look at the roots of a quartic equation. What kind of roots can they be? Now if we were to look at the graph of a quartic equation, something of the form y equals a1x to the power 4 plus a2x cubed and so on, where these values a1, a2, a3, a4 and a5 are real numbers, a1 not equal to 0. And then in the cases where a1 is greater than 0, we tend to get a W-shaped graph. And in the cases when a1 is negative, less than 0, we tend to get an M-shaped graph. I'll show you. So for instance, if we had a1 greater than 0, this is the kind of graph we would expect to get. And if a1 is less than 0, an M-shaped graph. And in this particular circumstances, we've got four real roots. Let's call them, say, alpha, beta, gamma and delta. So that means that when y is equal to 0, we would expect this equation here to equal 0 and factorise. Factorise to x minus alpha, x minus beta, x minus gamma and x minus delta. So it have the four real roots, alpha, beta, gamma and delta. But this isn't always the case, because we might find that when we plot our graph, if a1 is greater than 0, we get a graph looking like this, or when a1 is less than 0, we get a graph looking like this. And you can see that we've got, just in these cases, two real roots. Two real roots. Yet we know that it should factorise, giving us four roots. So what is happening is that we've got a situation like this, that we have two real roots, alpha and beta, but the remaining two brackets here expand to give us a quadratic factor, and this quadratic, when equal to zero, just gives us no real solutions. And we've seen before that if you've got a quadratic that equals zero with no real solutions, we end up with a complex conjugate pair. So we can expect the imaginary roots to be, say, x1 plus y1i and x1 minus y1i. But then, again, if you were to plot this graph, you wouldn't necessarily get these ones that you see here you could find that you get something like this, where the graph, when a1 is positive, doesn't cross the x-axis, or when a1 is negative, it doesn't cross the x-axis. So we have no real roots. And what we end up with is essentially, when you expand these two brackets here, you get a quadratic factor, and when you expand these two brackets you get a quadratic factor. But when each one of these quadratic factors equals zero, we have this time two complex conjugate pairs. The roots being x1 plus or minus y1i, or the other conjugate pair x2 plus or minus y2i. So, when we have a quartic equation equal to zero, we can expect one of these three scenarios to happen. Okay, so we can either get four real roots, or two real roots and one complex conjugate pair, or two complex conjugate pairs. So we can use this idea in the following question. Suppose we had to solve this equation then. x to the power 4 minus 9x cubed plus 22x squared plus 28x minus 120 equals 0, given that 4 minus 2i is a root. Well, if that's the case, then suppose the roots for this equation, let's say they are if alpha, beta, gamma and say delta are the roots then what can we expect? Well, we know that this would factorise to x minus alpha, x minus beta, x minus gamma, 
and x minus delta and that would equal zero and we could call this equation f of x a f of x being just the left hand side of this equation up here okay so we know already that one of those roots we're told is 4 minus 2i so therefore we know that since x must equal 4 minus 2i then it follows that the complex conjugate of this must be a root so it follows that x must equal 4 plus 2i is also a root because they must occur as complex conjugate pairs so if that's the case we know that if we were to multiply say these two brackets together they must equal zero so let's just do that we know that therefore if we were to say that x minus bracket 4 minus 2i multiplied by x minus bracket 4 plus 2i this must come to zero it's this part okay let's just put that on the green line underneath there so I'm looking at that part there of this equation it must equal zero well, we can work out this we can expand this out okay let's just expand it out so we've got x times x that's going to be x squared we're going to have x times this bracket here so it's going to give us minus x bracket 4 plus 2i and then we've got this bracket here multiplied by the x so we're going to get minus x bracket 4 minus 2i and then finally we're going to have this term here multiplied by this term here it'll be a plus and it'll be 4 minus 2i then multiplied by 4 plus 2i and this must equal 0 now if we expand this we end up with x squared and then minus 4x minus 2xi and then for this bracket minus 4x again and then plus 2xi and for this last bracket set of brackets we end up with 4 fours of 16 we get plus 8i then minus 8i so that's 0 and then minus 4i squared which is plus 4 and that equals 0 so grouping this further we get x squared and then minus 8x minus 2xi plus 2xi well that's 0 and then you've got 16 and 4 which is 20 and that equals 0 now this part here the x squared minus 8x plus 20 well that's what you get when you expand these two brackets what we have left is these two brackets which if multiplied out would give us a quadratic factor and we need to get that quadratic factor and to do that all we've got to do is just divide f of x by what we have here x squared minus 8x plus 20 so we can say that for the quadratic factor we've got to do algebraic long division and hopefully you're familiar with that so what I'm going to do then is divide x squared minus 8x plus 20 into our f of x which is this part here x to the power 4 minus 9x cubed plus 22x squared plus 28x minus 120 just about getting in there so what do we multiply x squared by then to give us x to the power 4 well it's x squared and so you now multiply x squared by each of these three terms here to give you x to the power 4 minus 8x cubed and then plus 20x squared subtract to work out what the remainder is and 
this goes to 0. Now we have minus 9x cubed minus minus 8x cubed. So that's going to be minus x cubed. 22x squared minus the 20x squared is plus 2x squared. And now we bring down the plus 28x. And we start all over again. What do you multiply the x squared by to give minus x cubed? Well, it's minus x. Multiply minus x with each of those three terms and you get minus x cubed plus 8x squared and then minus 20x. Again, subtract to work out what the remainder is going to be. This is 0. And then you've got 2x squared minus plus 8x squared. That's going to be minus 6x squared. 28x minus minus 20x. That's 48x. And then bring down the minus 120. So what do you multiply the x squared by to get minus 6x squared? Well, simply minus 6. Minus 6 times each of those three terms now gives us minus 6x squared plus 48x minus 120. And when we subtract, as expected, we should find we get zero remainder. Okay, so we now have that. And that is now telling us that we can rewrite this equation now as x squared minus 8x plus 20 multiplied by the quadratic factor, which we now see as x squared minus x minus 6, x squared minus x minus 6, and that equals 0. So we could factorize this quadratic factor. Sometimes it won't factorize, but in this particular example it does. So we've got that when it factorizes you have x minus 3 and x plus 2. That's going to equal 0. So we therefore know that x squared minus 8x plus 20, that factor must equal 0, or the x minus 3 should equal 0 or x plus 2 should equal 0. And we know the solutions to this equation here. We know that they are a complex conjugate pair. So we know that x equals 4 plus or minus 2i. And here we have two real roots. We have x equals 3 or x equals minus 2. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea then how we go about solving quartic equations. Knowing that the roots can either be four real roots or two real roots and a complex conjugate pair, or we could get two pairs of complex conjugate pairs. All right?